Welcome back to Beyond the Helmet, a podcast by Victory Sports. I'm your host, Steve McGrath, and in this episode, I'm pleased to bring you none other than a guy who tore it up for a near decade in the NFL at safety for the Carolina Panthers. He is now the head coach of the Fighting Camels at Campbell University. It is none other than the guy that won two national titles at Nebraska, Mike Minter. Now, Mike has done nothing but win his entire career, and he talked about how he built that philosophy, his mental toughness, how he was the terminator, being the, the heart and soul of the defense for the Panthers, and how that has translated to him being a coach at the collegiate level because what he's done at Campbell is astounding, taking them from where they were to where they are now, and I can only imagine what's going to come in the future. So I'm going to let Coach Minter break down everything, but before we do, I just need to remind you all that we're brought to you by Team Builder. And Team Builder works with over 500 high school football programs nationwide, as well as colleges and the NFL. So if you have your own strength coach, if you don't, you're just looking for a little bit of influence, go to teambuilder.com. Use the promo code VICTORY, and you're going to get a free gift, and that's V-I-Q-T-O-R-Y. Now, I do have to say before we jump into the interview with Mike that Mike called in, so there's very little video aspect of this, and I apologize. The quality is not as good as it normally is, but you can hear everything that Coach says. It's my end that's a little fuzzy, and that's okay. You don't really need to hear me. So here's Coach Mike Minter, and enjoy. Academic related, you know, so um, I think that was the biggest thing is, is get guys into the academic flow, and then after that, um, you know, start some football stuff. And so that's what we'll do. Um, well, it started yesterday. So we, we started our staff meetings again and and um, position meetings and, you know, O&D staff meetings. And, and so starting to now help some football. Got it. Uh, and just for your own health and the health of your yeah. You know your your family, your coaches, yeah. their families, and your players. Everyone's doing all right. Everybody is doing great. Uh, you know, so everybody in the organization is is doing great. Everybody is paying attention to, um, you know, all the the, the rules that that uh, the government is coming up with. You know, stay at home, uh, social distancing, and all that stuff, and and uh, you know, making sure that when you do go out. Um, you make sure you you washing your hands and and um, you know being very mindful of everything and um, you know that the the biggest thing is you know standing indoors man and and um, hopefully we can uh, fight this enemy together and and uh, get back to work. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Uh, you know, football is such a great microcosm of uh, life, just everything else that we do. Uh, so th as much as I'm looking forward to being able to have you coach your team and get you guys uh, continuing to climb, man, I looked at that, that year after year, uh, you're <laughs> certainly making a positive impact there uh, for the Camels. You know what? It, it was, um, it was, it was, a, it's been great. Let me say that um, when I took the job in, in our first season in 2013, you know, we was dead last in division one football. And and I think it's 240 some teams, and and we was dead last. Okay, so um, to to be able to take on that challenge, and now you know you, you're winning football program. Uh, we didn't we didn't had um, you know four straight winning football seasons, and uh, when you look at that, um, when you talk about coming from dead last and, and building a program that was non scholarship um, when I got there, and um, so we competing. Uh, with FCS programs that had scholarships and and um, we were non-scholarships. So not only are you dead last and, and now you're trying to build a program, you got to build a program asking people to pay you to play for you. And um, and that's that's pretty tough, especially in North Carolina, uh, where you have, at that time, we had um, 27 other schools who gave scholarships um, in the state of North Carolina. Number 28 and Davidson, number 29, um, you know, trying to get football players to come play for you in this state um, for for free, and um, and so you know that that was that was tough to to try to build a culture, try to build a program around that. Uh, we was able to do it. I've I've got some great coaches um, over the seven years that I've been here. 
I, I think the coaching staff that I've had over the over those time, of course, when you're successful, you can't keep them all. They 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 move on. Um, but we we've done a great job of building a culture that sustains and um, and continues to get better and better. Yeah, it, it's uh, the proof is in the pudding, right? So I, 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 it's easy to hear your words and look on paper and be like, oh yeah, you're uh, you're definitely doing it. But uh, before, because I I can't wait to jump into your story. But while we're talking about it, can you just you know, how do you go about developing that type of culture? Because in, instilling your culture and your process and having it permeate cannot be an easy feat. Right. No. I, I... First of all, the, the the overarching thing that I have is I, I feel like leadership drives culture, culture drives behavior, and then behavior drives results. And so we kind of uh, everything is around that. And um, and so I feel like a team also go through four phases um, of of their life. And the first phase is they got to learn how to compete. Um, the second phase is they got to learn how to win which we know that's very difficult. And, uh, and then, you know, the, the, the uh, second, um, the third phase is you got to learn how to deal with winning. So now you're winning, everybody patting you on the back, how you deal with that so you can continue to stay focused on what you need to do. Um, and then that fourth phase that a team goes through is learning how to be a champion, which is where we at today. Um, is, is now how do we go from a good football program, a winning football program, to a championship football program. And that's the jump that we got to make now. So we're in that fourth phase um, as you look at that. And so everything that we do is built around, um, you know, those things. And um, and so what I try to do is create um, the championship behaviors that you want in your culture. Again, the culture is going to drive the behaviors. Okay, so what is that? What What is those behaviors that we want in our culture? What do we want to live by? And um, we took the the uh, 15 blocks of um, Coach Wooden's um, pyramid of success. We actually used it. it when I was at um, Carolina Panthers with with Coach Fox. He came in. Um, we was a team that was one in 15. He comes in. Two years later, we go to the Super Bowl, and then we go to the NFC Championship game again. Two years after that, um, and the success that Coach Fox had, he used the pyramid of success. And so I use the same thing when I when I was building my culture. So I take them 15 blocks, and I say, guys, this is what we're gonna be about. And um, so so once you set the standard of what it is, now it's about accountability. So you got to keep everybody accountable to these to these standards, and everything matters. And um, and that's how we do it, man. And and we've been doing it from the top to the bottom, and everybody in our organization understand that. Um, it's their team. So if you see a hole, you need to fix it. You don't need to come call me. You don't need to go to um, your position coach. If you see it as a player, you fix it. Um, and if you can't fix it, then that's when you need help. That's when you move up the ladder. Um, and so that's one of the things that I try to teach uh, my guys is that, you know, culture is what helps you to adapt to all the different scenarios that happen on game day. And that happens every season, and um, and and that's really the type of thing that we do, and and that's how we built it over the seven years that we've been here. That's awesome. That's uh, so. I'm gonna guess though that you're only recruiting high character guys. You want guys that buy in. <laughs> that's right, because that's the only way to get it done. So when you look <laughs> at the recruiting piece, of course you got to get it right up front, right? So you got to get the right people in. And when you look at the um, pyramid of success. The cornerstones are industriousness and enthusiasm, and that's how we that's how we decide on if a guy is, you know, a fit for us and our culture. So we look at: Do you have a purpose and a plan around your life? Are you are you dedicated to being great? Do you um, do you love the game of football? The enthusiasm? Do you love um, the things that come with being great? Going to class. Um, you know, getting your homework in, getting up at five o'clock in the morning, working out, running. Do you love those things? And and that's the type of kid that we got to go after. And and you know, the proof is in the pudding with them. 
because most of those guys have won championships in high school. And so when you look at a football player or um, another athlete, you just say, okay, have you won a championship? Yes. Boom. That's the guy we want. Okay. Um, and then we look at, we also look at the parents um, because really at the end of the day, the first seven to eight years of your life um, is being in, in, you know, whatever your parents are, whoever uh, raising you, um, that that's what's instilled in you. Okay. And those um, people too, and, and we say, okay, are these the type of results, these are the type of behaviors that we want? And um, so we, we recruit the parent more than we recruit the kid because um, that is a big reflection of what we're going to get into the program. I love it. And Coach, as someone, I, I believe it was essential to uh, a book by John Wooden that I had read. Um, I've used the word industriousness, and the only other people that ever have heard that word or understand it are people <laughs> that have read that book. But I yeah. think that that is one of the best words and one of the – there's a reason why it's a pillar. It's one of the singular most important things that anyone can have, just that ability to work. Okay. Listen, if you cannot work, you cannot get done what you need to get done, right? Because it's all about action. Everything is about, you know, creating action. A lot of people sit and think about it. A lot of people sit and dream about it. But at the end of the day, you got to take 90% action and 10% sitting there dreaming about what you want to get done. And if you have that industriousness, that's what you're going to have. You're going to have a guy that's going to work hard, that's going to show up every single day and love it. You know, you got to have that passion and that desire to um, want to be great with it too. And, and, and you know, that's, that's how we choose. So if a kid doesn't have that, um, we look at the, you know, think about it in high school. You, you got a kid that's going to class. And to me, in high school, if you showing up every day, you paying attention and you working hard, you're going to at least have a three-pointer. Right, like, like yep. you at least gonna have a three point oh, and um, so we look for guys, you know, at that three point three, three point um, nine. We look in that area because we know those people are locked in to doing the basic things that they need to do. Now, of course, you got some intelligent people that they can get away um, with it a little bit better, um, but then we also look at that test score. So, so that kind of reflects on um, again what type of intelligence can this person take information, um, and then critically think about that information to get the right answer. Um, that's the other thing that we look at. And um, we got a sports psychologist that's on our staff. And I, I, I probably have, I'm probably the only FCS team that probably have a sports psychologist part of their program. And, and the reason why, in the 90s, when I was playing at Nebraska, Coach Tom Osborne, um, that's what we had. We had that way in the night, way before this stuff became popular. Uh, we we had a sports psychologist on staff um, that was there helping us understand the mental side of the game, and um, and that's what we do. So um, every recruit that we have um, has to take our um, psychology um, test, and um, so we can kind of see where that person is at and see if that person fits um, our culture. That's awesome. And that is so wild that in the 90s, uh, you guys had that. <laughs> and coach, I, I'm so happy that you brought that up because, you know, what part of what I wanted to do today is jump into, you know, your story, what makes you the coach that you are today. And I'd have to imagine that you've already mentioned Coach Fox. And now you've mentioned, uh, of course, the legendary Coach Osborne. And, and that's to take nothing away from Coach Seifert or, or Coach Capers uh, from the, your Panthers days as well. But I mean, John Fox is one at the highest level. You know, Coach Osborne, of course, uh, one of the best to ever do it. And those that men, that might have been one of the, the – I'm sure I, we've got to get into how that was probably one of the most wild rides a program has ever had. Oh, it, it, listen, um, you know, I, I talk to Coach Osborne every year. So we sit down um, every year and kind of go over um, the past season that I've had. And even when I was playing, I talked to Coach. And, um, you know, you talk about just a great man that understood um, every part of what made a student athlete great. And when we came in in 1992, that recruiting class, which was ranked number two all-time rec recruiting classes of all time, 
And I think the first uh, group was like the Four Horsemen, uh, Notre Dame freshman class. That that was that was number one. We were number two, and um, and so when you look at that, when you bring people in that have that that mentality that we're going to be great. It's okay to win Big Eight, and it was Big Eight back in the day, right? It's okay to win Big Eight championships, um, but we want to win national championships. And every guy that came in in 1992 had that mentality. Now you plug them into a system like what Coach Osborne had built, and that's what you had in those years uh, from 92 um, to 97. You, you just had um, guys that understood it, we created a culture that um, everything was accountable. Could nobody do anything, okay? We keeping everything accountable. I remember, um, you know, when a guy, a walk-on guy was doing it wrong, and, you know, you have starting, you know, offensive linemen yelling and screaming, that ain't it, you know, you're going to do it right. And, and we just held everybody accountable, man, from Tommy Frazier to – to the to, to the walk on guy, um, everybody had a standard, and and you had to live by that standard. And so, Coach Osborne didn't have to do much. And and I think that's what created what you just talked about that dominant run in the '90s, and um, and that dominant football team that I always say is the best college football team that ever um, played. Because you know, a lot of people talk about LSU this year. Um, a lot of people talk about um, the Miami team, I think in 2001 or 2002, somewhere around there, they talk about that football team. They talk about the USC um, football team with, uh, uh, with, with those guys. And, and, um, and I look at them and I say, the, the problem is, is none of them, none of them defenses could stop our triple option. I mean, that's the, that, that, that would be the difference is they couldn't stop Lawrence Phillips and our offense, and our defense is really good that we would have been able to stop them, just like we did when we played Florida in the national championship. And they had the fun and gun. They had all this Florida <laughs> speed, and they had all this stuff, right, and they scored 20-some points. <laughs> and, and they scored the last seven points late in the game, and it's, you know, 60-something to, to, to 24. And um, and that's why I tell people, I said, that's what we would have done to every team that, that ever played the game is we would have stopped you and you wouldn't be able to stop us. And then we would have got, you know, ahead of you. And now uh, we, we let Grant Wishtham go. We let Jason Peters go and, and, and Tom Mitch. And, and now all of a sudden, you know, Terrell Farley blitzing. Now, now you're in trouble because you, you're in our <laughs> wheelhouse. <laughs> so, so I tell people, man, 95 team definitely was the greatest team of all time. Oh, yeah. And, Coach, I, I wasn't even going to go there. I, I knew. I knew you were going to stand pretty firm there, I, and as you should. Uh, it, but just from what you said about Coach Osborne, what he did, it, it seems like the way that you've modeled yourself as a coach is a direct reflection. Not that you didn't take, you know, your own style and, you know, mm -hmm. uh, take from Coach Fox or other places, but yeah. it seems like Coach Osborne laid the foundation of how you yes, wanted to be. No, no, no doubt about it. Uh, Coach Osborne understood, like I said, he understood the full student athlete. And from the mental side, the emotional side, the spiritual side, to the physical side, because as you know, um, you know, our, our strength and conditioning program is what started it all. Um, you know, we, we put, we made that popular, um, when, you know, with that. And so all the things that people talk about, we had a nutritionist program before that became popular too. Now that's just now starting to become a popular thing here in the last three or four years. We was doing right. that again in the nineties. And and this is this is how, you know, uh far ahead Coach Osborne was. Um when you look at our, you know, like our center um piece of where everybody went. We had our weight room, we had our um uh, cafeteria, uh, we had our um academic because, we, again, we had counselors, academic counselors. So everything that people were doing today, we was doing that in the 90s. And everything was a central location. And it was built around where we eat. Everybody got to go eat, right? So so we, we was able to um, touch everybody because of, um, you know, 
the centerpiece was the cafeteria. And and when you think about all that, you think about the time that was spent at the stadium. You know, we didn't have all this stuff that they have today. You know, where they have slides and TVs everywhere and games and all that type of stuff to keep people um, there. We was there because most of our you know most of our work was done in that area, and we was there from 7 a.m. Um, until about 7 p.m. And that was every single day. Um, we was we were surrounded by great people to help us become great at what we uh, wanted to become. That's awesome. I, so, of course, it, Coach Osborne, you know, set up the institution, right? I, I mean, he sort of, but before anyone knew it, that was the model that other, pretty much every program was. But I, I just have to ask because, uh, of course, you, you mentioned Tommy Frazier, but yeah. There was this young kid backing him up named Scott Frost who uh, would, would just, just so happen to go on about 25 years later to return to that program, trying to bring it back to those glory days. And uh, I just wanted to, to pick your brain on uh, yeah. Coach Frost. Yeah. And, you know, uh, do you, how is he going to get Nebraska back to the top of the, the Big 12? I'm sorry. Well, yeah, yeah, Big 12. Big 10 now. So, so now we're in the Big 10. And um, that that don't even sound right, right? Nebraska is <laughs> big team, so I, I still have a hard time understanding that too. Uh, but but when you look at Scott, look at a guy that first of all is is born and raised in Nebraska. Okay, so he understands the culture of Nebraska, and you must understand the culture of Nebraska in order to be successful there. Coach Osborne. Again, he he's from Nebraska. He was born and raised there too, um, and so you, you know I, I think that's number one. Is he he understood and he understands what it takes to be somebody from Nebraska. We're gonna be hardworking people. Uh, we we we're gonna be solid individuals, um, and we're gonna be tough. Like like we're gonna be tough minded. Not, 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 nothing is gonna you know uh, make us quit. We, we're going to also be loyal, okay? And, and, and we're going to cooperate with each other to get it done. So when you look at the culture of Nebraska, that's what you get, and that's who he is. And um, and and so and then he was part of, of that run. You know, he he went to Stanford first. You know, um, I, I think uh, the the um, the education of Stanford kind of wooed him away, and he soon came back home. <laughs> and um, once Tommy Frazier got done, he became the quarterback. Um, and and he was he was a he was a scout team guy when he came over for a whole year because he had to set out a year. And we was beating him up every day, beating him up, making him tough. And um, and so he began to understand what it took um, to be a champion in Nebraska. And and um, and he did it at, at at the quarterback position. And and so then now he comes back as a coach. And he, he takes everything that Coach Osborne taught us. I mean, he's doing the same type of stuff. And it's going to take time because you got to get those type of people in. Uh, one of the things that you can see right away, what did he do? He built the walk-on program. Who is the walk-on that's walking on in Nebraska? The Nebraskans, all right? You already know what you're getting. You're getting those guys with the cornerstones. And so you begin to build your program now around the walk-on because that's the spirit of your football team. And then you sprinkle that in with some people like me from Oklahoma. You sprinkle that in with some people like Tommy Frazier from Florida and, um, you know, Lawrence Phillips from California. And then you begin to uh, put together a, a great football team. And and that's, that's what he's doing right now. He, he's instilling that culture into everybody. And that is not going to just happen in two years. Um, no, he's, yeah, gonna, he's gonna need time. I, I think about five years he'll get it to where he needs to get it to. Um, people just got to be patient, and um, and then before you know it, uh, we will be competing for championships again. I got all the uh, utmost respect for for Scott and um, the confidence that he'll make it happen. Yeah, and you know I talked to Darian Daniels, who was a uh, who transferred there from Oklahoma State. He just played one year. Uh, his uh, grad transfer year uh, is you know, hopefully going to be playing on Sunday soon, but he said that Nebraska will be winning the conference title within the next couple of years. He was yeah. dead certain having spent the year there that it, it's going to happen. Yes. 
I agree. I agree. Right. Now, I did just wanted to, uh, to fast forward a, a little bit uh, just because of, uh, you know, you, so you're a stand-up player uh, yes. while at the powerhouse that is Nebraska. Yes. But when it came to getting drafted and going into the NFL, which, of course, uh, 56 overall, uh, second round of the draft, 1997, you, you, step, you get drafted to the Panthers. Uh, how did you – focus on your game to prepare yourself to up it to the next level, just in terms of, you know, mentally having to learn a new playbook, uh, you know, different coaching style from where you just came from. How did you adjust to the NFL, just speed of the game and lifestyle? Well, I think um, that's, that's really built around what I call mental toughness and, and mental toughness is, is being able to adjust at any situation that you're given. Right. So, um, you know, if it's peewee to, um, high school, if it's high school to college, college to the NFL, um, you know, I, I never really looked at I need to raise my level. It just, I'm just going to raise my level based off of who I'm competing with, right? So it, it, it was just a mindset of, you know, when, when I get there, I'm, I'm going to compete and um, I'm going to win the starting job. And, and that's how I did when I came to Nebraska, um, started as a freshman. Same thing, um, you know, going into the National Football League, started as a rookie after the sixth game of the season. And um, and so that was my mindset. My mindset was never, oh, wow, this is the NFL. Um, I need to do something different. <laughs> no, my mindset was, okay, uh, this is a new level, and um, let, let's see what everybody got. I'm here to compete at the highest level and um, to become a starter. And, and so my focus was on that. Um, so when I got drafted um, with the Carolina Panthers, it, it was just let me get to Charlotte and um, get off this plane and, and start competing. And um, and so that's what I did, man. So the, the moment is never um, too big, regardless of what that moment is. It's just, it's just the next thing. And um, the NFL was just the next thing. Now, I can tell you this, when I went back to Nebraska, um, you know, in the off season. And I was looking at the film, the practice film of Nebraska. And then I said, man, we must be going fast because it looked like um, the Nebraska film was in slow motion. <laughs> so so you, you do not realize the speed that you're playing at when you get to the National Football League. So what I will always say to people is it's the speed that changes. Um, the game doesn't change. The game is the game. And I always understood football from – the time I was four years old. I understood the game, understood how it worked, understood how to get other people in the positions that they needed to get into. Um, that, was a, that was a simple part uh, of the deal. So when you talk about learning a new playbook, I already know that I'm going to come in and I'm going to be a step ahead of everybody else because I understand the game. And I know it doesn't change. Only thing that changes is the terminology that people call it. At the end of the day, when you're on defense, you got to have one more than they got. Okay, so all right, let, let's just figure out how we get one more in the box to their to their um, ability to run the football. And then when they try to pass the football, you got to have one more than they have going out in these combination of these routes. And um, and then you just kind of figure out where you're gonna fit into that puzzle. Boom, and then you know it becomes very very simple. So I learned the playbook uh, really really quick when I was at Nebraska, and then also when I came to the league. Got it. it. And I love that I, you already said that you were a starter by week six. And, you know, outside of the little staff infection in 98, I, I mean, you were just the Terminator while you were there. I mean, you, you, you never missed a game. You were just like the, the part of the heart and soul of that defense for you know, a decade. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Unbelievable time, man. <laughs> I, can you just like – just developing that mindset. I, I mean, yeah. it's so easy. I'm sure that there were times that, of course, we were banged up and it would have been easy to miss a game here or there, but you didn't do it. I, I mean, how can, can you just go a little further into that, that mindset of, of just being a Terminator out there? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, first of all, my, my faith is, is very important to me. And, um, and, you know, my faith really, grounds me into who I am and it really gives me that anchor because I believe that everybody has to have that in their life um, so so you know where where you get your strength from and um, and so that's 
that's the first thing that I that I talk about and and what helped me have that mindset. The other thing is 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 you know I have the the, the ability to block out things. So if it's pain, if it's the crowd, if it's the situation, and then zero in on what's going on in the moment. Um, you know, I was I was always able to do that. So the focus and the concentration of that piece um, was something that that God gave me. So it wasn't it wasn't something that I developed. It was just something that was always there. And so I could play through pain if I had pain, like breaking my foot in the Super Bowl in the in the beginning of the third quarter and then finishing the game, and um, and playing like nothing is going on. Uh, you know, th- those type of things are are things that that I had the ability to do is is to focus in and lock in on what's important. The other thing, because I was a mechanical engineer um, at Nebraska. So what that taught me was how to, you know, break down information and how to break down systems. And everything is built in a system and everything has a part. And so then how do you break the system up to find all the pieces of the system to then now to be able to focus on each one of those to be able to be great at it. And um, that was the other thing that, you know, my mind just works that way. Um, and, and so I'll, I'm able to break down situations um, in, in games and, and the moments. And, and, um, and so when you have that combination of things and then God built a body that was able to take care of all them hits that, that was going on um, all those years. And, um, Man, I've never really thought about it. I've never really thought about coming out. I never really thought about missing a game. Um, you know, the staff effect here uh, was, you know, was life-threatening. Um, they told me not to even come back. Um, and I come back six weeks later, and I, and I finished the season and started the last four games. And, um, and, and then from that point on, I don't think I missed another play, um, you know, my whole career. So – and it's just something that, that you know, it's, it's time to go. Let's go. Something special right there. Uh, now, Mike, I, I just wanted to, to ask, when you look at your career, um, yeah. you know, just starting at like 2000, you know, you, the, the, the Panthers bring in Moose and Deion Grant. And the next year, you know, Wanky comes on board. You get, you know, Steve Smith. And then 2002, John Fox becomes head coach. Rodney yeah. Pete is there, but you know Will Witherspoon, Chris Jenkins, Julius Peppers. You were watching in real time guys coming onto the team. Uh, some drafted, some by free agency that were yeah. going to become massive contributors. Did yeah. you at that time? Did you feel something building because the win loss didn't necessarily suggest that you guys were making a lot of progress, but. Yeah. Coach Fox comes in. You talked about, you know, the uh, John Wooden's pyramid. He yeah. puts that in, and then boom, 2003 comes. You guys make the Super Bowl run. Did you feel that brewing over the course of the years? Well, um, over the course of the years when John Fox got there, um, when Seifert was there, I, I think the problem with Seifert was he, he when he took over San Francisco, it was already built. Yeah. Right. So, so you didn't have to build anything. And I think he looked at us like we should have been, you know, Joe Montana, Ronnie Lott, Jerry Rice, you know, these type of guys already, we was young. So we needed somebody to teach us um, as an organization, how to be that. And, and he, he couldn't do that. And so when coach Fox came in, that's what he did. He said, okay, guys, I'm going to teach you how to be champions. OK, and not, you know, I already understand what that looks like. I've been winning championships since Little League. OK, so, you know, I, I tell people all the time, I said, man, I, I lost more games in my first season in the league that I did from Little League all the way to college. <laughs> and so and so I, I already know what that looks like. And, and, um, and then we had a lot of other guys that understood that. And then we began to get the talent in. Like you said, you named all the guys that was that was there, and so at that point now it's just teaching them um, the culture that we have, okay, the culture that that we need to have to be champions, and they bought in, you know, um, you know, I, Steve Smith was a young guy, um, you know, Julius Pepper was was a young guy. Now these two guys are going to be in the Hall of Fame 
And I remember when they first came in. I remember, you know, teaching them, you know, how to how to get things done, right? And and really raising them guys up um through the league. And um and, and now they're gonna be Hall of Fame football players, man. Um I think we did a great job of selecting talent, you know, guys like Chris Jenkins, like you said. Um it, it was just unbelievable. We had the veteran leadership, uh, which was myself and and Moose and uh, Muhammad on on I mean because Moose was drafted in '96. I was drafted in '97. So we basically grew up together um, through through all this. And uh, and you know we had Dan Morgan in the middle on defense at, at linebacker. You know had Mark Fields, um, who who's the fastest man I ever seen. Okay. And listen, he he don't have to stretch it nuts. He he just get off the he get out of his car, he got boots on, and he go run a four three. I mean, this is the type of dude he was. I mean, he's just a freak athlete, man. And then you got, you know, you have Sam Mills, who I played with his last season, um, was one of our coaches. And so you had that mentality in the coaching staff too on the defense. And and um, you had Jack Del Rio, who was there, who who helped build that mentality. And you said Dion Grant, the, you know, again, a, a great safety from Tennessee, young. And again, just taking these young guys, man, and and uh, you know, molding them into, man, look, this is what it takes to be a champion. So let's go do that. And and guys paid the price. And and um, man, when you work hard, you pay the price, and you and you believe and trust one another. Man, it's nothing that you can't do. And that's what I try to tell everybody. Um, look, we won in 15. Two years later, we're in the Super Bowl and a field goal away from winning that thing. And um, nobody gave us a chance. But we had a lot of guys that, that bought into what Coach Fox was talking about, and we put in the work. We put in the work. It wasn't free. It wasn't easy. But everybody put in the work, and, and uh, man, you know, we end up in the Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, but you know, Coach, you, you mentioned Sam Mills, and I, yeah. I certainly wanted to touch on that uh, because, like I said from the top, Football is a microcosm of life, and yeah. you have the you, – you, like you said, you actually played with him, let alone right. experienced him coming back as a coach. But you have that emotional roller coaster that you, know, you and your teammates go through. But on a completely different level, there's Ray Carruth. Yeah. So – and I, I'm not you – know, I'm not trying to – take this down a, a dark path or anything. No, but no, yeah. How – you know, uh, how does – the team, the you know, the the family of you know, not just the players but the coaches. How do you guys handle tremendous adversity like those two situations brought you? Because yeah. two very different, and two that can certainly rock you. No, yeah, I mean when when because uh, me and Ray came in together, so he was the first round pick, and right. I was the second round pick in '97. So again, we grew up together. So so um, you know, we we knew each other. Um, from being little kids in the National Football League to trying to grow up to be young men in the league, and and so you know that that incident when that when that happened and and everything that went down with that, um, you just in disbelief, right? You you're just like, wow, this is really life, or <laughs> like this is this is what can happen to you really fast, and it can go um, down a, a a dark path really really quick um, before you even know it, and. Um, and, and so that was that was a sad moment um, there uh, in the organization, and and so what you do, man, you you, you have to um, eliminate that. And the way you eliminate that in, in sports, you got to win. I mean, it, no nobody is going to forget about those things if you continue to be um, a laughing stock of the National Football League. And when you look at these organizations um, that have been losing all the, all the years. They just keep on losing. They keep well. Everybody laughs at them because they keep on losing. Let them start winning and win. You know, get get to win a NFC championship or AFC championship. Get to the Super Bowl. Then all those things kind of go away. And that's what happened. Uh, we we started winning, and um, and and I I saw the whole city of Charlotte come together um, once we started winning. It was it was the most unbelievable thing I've ever seen of how um, winning can bring people together, and it, it was it was an unbelievable ride. But 
then you have a guy like Sam Mills, who who's really the heart and soul of the organization. Now he gets cancer, right? And we like, okay, how do you deal with that? I think Mark Fields was diagnosed um, first, and he he had cancer first, and <clears throat> and then we were just kind of in in um, you know, like man, how how do we deal with Mark Fields not being there? And then all of a sudden, Sam get di- diagnosed and, and he comes to work every single day he doesn't miss a day when we head into the um super bowl he, he's there every day and he gave one of the most amazing speeches which is why the carolina panthers today still um now it's their it's their slogan you know keep pounding because yep. that that's what life was all about and he gave that speech um, to us that you know what man we don't know what's uh, what life is going to bring us um but but what we do know is, is that man we got to keep pounding right and we were just like you know it was just touching because we see a man doing that in life and now we we trying to do that as a football team as a relationship um, all those lessons man that i've been able to to learn and the different people um that i've been able to experience these things with um and i, I you know sometimes i can't even believe um, some of the people that I that I live life with, man, to to um, play this game of football. Yeah, uh, well said. I, uh, Coach, as we get to the end here, I, I just wanted to ask you about um, your decision to ultimately hang it up. Uh, you, yeah. We know that you thought that 2007 would be your last year, but mm-hmm. ultimately, right to that 2007 season, yeah, you're not on the field. I, I, I believe you said it was your knees that ultimately uh, – was that was the the downfall of the Terminator? Uh, can you just speak on how hard it was to make that decision, and, and then ultimately, how did you go about? Because uh, you didn't, of course, immediately become the head coach at Campbell. There was quite a few years there where uh, you were able to sort of reassess and, and figure out what you wanted to do with that next step in your life. Yeah, well, um, you know, at the end, um, you know, I, we was in training camp, and um, and I I just woke up. I woke up one day and I said, it's over. That's, like That's it. how it happened. That's exactly how it happened. I said, it's over. And um, so I went to practice that night. We had a night practice. And um, and then after practice, I, 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 I knew it was over. I knew I was going to retire. And um, and so I walked out the practice field and I walked straight into Coach, uh, Coach Fox's office. And, and Marty Herney was our um, GM at the time and, and uh, walked up to both of those guys in their office and I let them know. I said, man, I'm going to retire. Um, it, it, it's just time to move on. And um, I said, I'm going to talk to Mr. Richardson tomorrow because we was actually going to have um, Fan Fest is what we call it, where we go from Spartanburg and come back to Charlotte and kind of have a practice in front of the fans. And, and, um, and so I met with him the next day and I told him, I mean, we were sitting in the office about two hours just just crying and reminiscing about, you know, the 10, 10 years of, of me coming in. Man, I was a little young kid, and, and um, he, he, you know, he helped me grow up as a, as a young man in, in, in that business. And, and, um, and to a, a grown man that understood um, what life was all about. And so, man, we, we, it, it was a hard time. And, um, and so, you know, I'm the type of guy, once I make up my mind and, and I know what, what's, what's next, I, I just start to move into that, into that space. And, and we had our press conference the next day and, and um, I announced to the world that I was done. And, you know, it was a tough, tough deal. And, and then now I started moving into what I was going to do next. And I started moving into business. So I built my business and, and um, it, you know, I built it pretty big. I probably had about 350 um, employees at, at, at my enterprise and, and uh, you know, we was doing a lot. We was doing uh, development, real estate, commercial. Uh, we was doing uh, residential. Uh, we also, I also had a underground construction company. Um, I also had a consulting firm that uh, we went into Fortune 500 companies and, and uh, helped them put uh, develop um, organizational plans, uh, do lean six sigma. Basically, basically go in there and you're coaching, right? <laughs> okay, here, here's how you lean it up to be able to maximize the people that you have and making sure you have the right people on the bus 
and the right plans to execute. And um, so we was doing that all over the country. And, and, and so, but the business piece wasn't giving me everything I needed. Okay, like each deal was good, but the deal now became you have to sustain the deal, right? And I didn't like that part. I was like, ah, oh, that's kind of boring. And um, so in the midst of me building my corporation, uh, one of my friends who was an athletic director at a high school in Charlotte, it was a private school in Charlotte, and said, um, hey, Mike, I want you to come over here and help me build this football program. And I was like, okay, man, that'd be fun, you know. And, uh, and so I came in. I came in, in in May, and the school school was out, and the guy that was a coach, he re, you know he resigned after the school year, and so we didn't have a coach, and so he was like, hey Mike, won't you take this? I said, man, I don't know about that, and he was like, man, go ahead. And so in July, I decided to do it. Okay, now mind you, in August we playing football, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I got to learn high school football. I got to learn. You know, spread offense. We ain't running the spread offense. I, I didn't even know what it was, right? So I'm like, okay, what is? So I, I spent a whole month studying football from high school perspective, and um, and and because I didn't want them to change their offense, I wanted them and their defense to be the same. And and so um, I remember um, coming in, and um, I remember us playing our first game. Um, I had an offensive coordinator, I had a defensive coordinator um, that first game. And um, and I'm watching what's going on. And I'm like, no. And we got beat. Uh, we got we got tore up, right? And I said, okay. Um, and I told them after the game, I brought them all together. And I said, okay, that's my mistake. I said, um, I'm going to call everything. I'm going to call the offense, the defense, special team. I'm going to do everything. And we will not lose another game. Right. Okay. So I made that pro uh, proclamation to these guys, and we went undefeated all the way up to the state championship game. Okay. And um, so we get in the state championship game, and it's different because we're playing on a Saturday night as opposed to a Friday night. And um, and so I let my kids do whatever they were going to do, um, and then we were going to meet like four hours before the game. And so we did all that, and um, we got beat. We got beat by three points. And I told them after that game, I said, we would never lose another championship game um, again. And uh, for the next two years, we won the state championship. And so I was there for three years. And, um, you know, three straight state championship appearances. We won two out of three. And, um, and then at that point, I said, man, you know what? My calling is, is coaching. And I said, I want to do it at a higher level to kind of challenge myself. And I said, um, I'm going to go into college coaching. And I'm going to give myself five years to become a um, head coach at a Division I um, program because it's not, it's not many African-American head coaches. And I said, I want to be one of those guys to do that. And, um, and I did it in, in two. So I went to John C. Smith one year, went to Liberty one year, and then right after the, uh, my Liberty uh, season was over, I got the call from Campbell University and um, became the head coach at Campbell. So that that's my journey in coaching. <laughs> <laughs> and, and like we, we said at the top, I mean, what you've done year after year at Campbell is just improve and improve. You guys joined the Big South Conference. I mean, yeah. even if, uh, you know, it, you, you were six and five back-to-back -back years, well, you, you're winning more in-conference games. I, I mean, there's just visible year after year growth. So I, I can only imagine what the expectation is heading into 2020. Hey, listen, man, it's going to be fun. Um, this will be – we was young. I mean, them, them, them two years that, that we we joined the, the Big South, uh, we was a young organization, of course. And um, this would be the first year um, that I would have more scholarship guys than I would have non-scholarship guys because of the transition. And um, you, this would be the, the, the second year or the only year that I've also had the same starting quarterback. Um, so I've had a different starting quarterback for seven straight years. And, um, so you know I'm excited about having uh, 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 the same guy under center um, to be able to, um, as you know, is, is very, very critical to being successful and being a championship organization. And, um, and so that's what we have, man. We got, we got guys now 
I tell people my young puppies that I had two years ago, now now they started to grow up into mature dogs. And so um, everybody better get ready. <laughs> uh, and I, I like how this goes back to what you said too, hitting that next level, of, yeah. you know, that fourth level of being, you know, that, that championship caliber yeah. team that, you know, I, I'm sure that you see it right there so close. I bet you can almost taste it. <laughs> Every day, Steve, I, I get up <laughs> and I look at that stuff, man. I, I sit there and I say, wow, I, I can't wait for us to get back to training um, because I know what I have in my football team. And um, I, I know how hungry these guys are and everything they've done to get them in position to now go from good to great, go from a winning program now to a championship program. And it's not going to be easy because, you know, the Big South, as you know, is a is a really, really good conference. And, uh, you know, it's a physical conference. And, and every year we start off really good, you know, six and one last year. Um, year before that, we was five and one, you know. And, um, and then the end of the season is where you, where you make your money, but that's where your depth shows up because of injuries and people get hurt. And, and now you got to have people behind there. And I think now we, we have that depth to be able to sustain a solid season for, for the whole season to try to win that championship. Well, Coach easy. anyone would be doing it. But, of course, we all know that it is very difficult and there's very few that are, are willing and able to lead programs to that level. And uh, uh, and I know that you're one of them. So I, I, I'm sure it's going to be happening soon. Thank you. I appreciate the um, opportunity, uh, Steve, to be on here with you. And, and uh, man, keep spreading the great word about this game of football. Oh, you have my word at that. It, you out of here. I have a, a couple of quick questions for you. We call it the gauntlet. So I, okay. I just need your knee jerk reaction to a couple of questions. Yes, sir. What's most important, the number one offense or having the number one defense? Ooh, number one defense. <laughs> uh, Coach, if you said anything else, I would have been disappointed. <laughs> now, you, you've been through so much, but if you could name one favorite football memory to date, what would that be? Mm, wow. I think uh, winning back-to-back -back national championships. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be a pretty hard one to top. <laughs> now, what's more important? Is it the players or is it the scheme? Oh, players. Players. Without hesitation. Yes. Did you have a pregame ritual that you stuck to? Yes, I did. Um, I had Michael Jackson playing in my headphones. And um, I would get to the stadium. Um, I would, I would uh, you know, get tape. And once I got tape, I would then put on my pad. Then I would go lift weights. And um, after I got done lifting weights, um, I would drink me a Red Bull. And um, then put on my eye black. Once I put on my eye black, it was time to go to work. And, uh, and, and that was my routine every single time but michael jackson is the key <laughs> uh and everyone knows what era you played now in case it wasn't obvious <laughs> uh, and, and That's coach, right. coach i promise you this is the last one but i think it's most important given everything that you've been through as both a player a coach and just a man of uh, much success what is the best piece of, of advice that you would give to a young student athlete you know what? Faith is everything. And um, you must have something that you believe in that's bigger than yourself. That's it. That's it right there. Well, Coach, I can't thank you enough for taking the time today. It's been a, a real pleasure to learn more about your story. And I'm sure there's very big things coming to North Carolina via Campbell University. Thank you.